As, it, as we talk about MPB and education, many people don't realize when they think about Mississippi Public Broadcasting, you automatically think about television, right? You automatically think about radio. You don't always think about education. So as a director of education, I'm really excited to share with you all about the many services that we provide every day. And these are direct services, so we are a convener for events such as this, but we also are able to provide direct services in the fields of early childhood and dropout prevention, college and career readiness. We also provide instructional resources for K through 12 educators, and we also provide a lot of community engagement around the state of Mississippi as well. So I would encourage you all to check us out on our website, mpbonline.org, click on education, and you'll see a lot of the information about the various resources that we can provide to you all. And we want to make sure that everybody today is an American graduate champion in your own way that you will engage with us beyond today. Don't let this be the end, but engage with us beyond today to make sure that we're impacting students across the state of Mississippi. Is that all right? All right. So I want to bring up at this time, one of the, the features that we have as it relates to youth engagement is in the summer every year since 2012, we've engaged high school students around the dropout crisis and they come to us for leadership development, they learn about community engagement and development, they learn about production skills, and they create their own mini documentaries around the issues that they face as students today. And they are the producers, they are the directors, they are the script writers, they are the actors and the actresses, they do all the music and the videos. And so I'm really excited to bring up at this time Time, Ishmael Gray, one of our students who has gone through our Summer Institute, and he's also been instrumental in working with us throughout the years to make sure that we implemented a peer-to-peer -peer solution to make sure our students are part of this solution as well. So let us receive Ishmael Gray to come and talk about his experience, and then we'll show you a quick video of some of the work of our students across the summer. Um, good morning. Um, my experience with um, the AM grad program over the summer, it really helped me like uh, as an artist and as a producer. Um, it helped us it helped us as students be able to express how we really feel about what's going on in society and allowed us to be creative in our own ways and share our own talents and it was a good way to connect with people like other kids around the city and uh, basically just learn more about film and production and how we can use those things to help fix the uh, problems that we face in everyday society. So um, uh, it was a very, it's a very good program for young high school students to just be creative and actually come up with ways to fix the problems that they see every day. I want you all to, I wanted him to also share with you all in terms of his own talents and abilities even through this. So you didn't kind of talk about that a lot, but you have a lot of talents and abilities that have really been enhanced even through working with us across the summer as well. So if you'll mention that. Um, yeah, so we, um, uh, like she said, we, everything uh, was something that we produced and something that we did, like uh, as far as the music, um, me and my friends, we came up with like producing the actual music for our films and uh, directing and script writing the whole nine. So we, we really got to enhance our skills in that aspect. All right. So as he stays right here for a moment, I want to cue this video is entitled The Chosen One that was produced by some of the students in a team over the course of the summer for our Can I Kick It Summer Institute. This production is part of American Graduate. Let's make it happen a public media initiative made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Let's take a look at the quote of the day. Ashton, how about you read it aloud for everyone?
makes it a nerve in in a a Congratulations, Aaliyah, on making all A's. Thanks, Mom. Get down here right now, Ashton. What is this? Can you explain this? Ashton, are you listening? Yes, ma'am. I'll, I'll do better. Dr. Jackson? Yes? I just wanted to apologize for the way I acted yesterday. It's fine, but why were you avoiding me yesterday? I'm concerned about you. I just, I, I had a bad day yesterday. What happened? Do you want to go to my office and talk about it? Sure. OK, so what happened? You know I'm here to help and make sure that you're OK. Well, I've noticed that when I, I try to read, uh, the words get scrambled on the page. It makes it hard for me to recognize the words because I get the letters mixed up. Oh, I see. And my teachers make it worse because they don't give me the help that I am in need of. Well, I can sit with you and help you through this. So after school, you and I can have a one-on-one -on -one session and we'll see if this helps you improve in all your classes. Thank you. I really appreciate this. You're the first person who's ever tried to help me. No problem. That's what I'm here for. One in five students, or 15 to 20 percent of the population, have a language-based learning disability. Nearly the same percentage of males and females has dyslexia. In minority and high poverty schools, 70 to 80 percent of children have inadequate reading skills. 62 percent of non-reading students dropped out of high school. And 80 percent of children with an individual education plan have reading difficulty, and 85% of those are dyslexic. much for sharing your story. Is there anything else you would like to say to the people that are watching? Well, I just want to say that people like me, with mental disparities, are just like everyone else. We aren't some alien breed, and we do exist. So don't throw us aside and don't count us out, because one day we might be the chosen one. <laughs>